Life can be messy. Life can be unpredictable. But a whole lot of love. And a little wine makes it all work. This is Love and Jesus Juice. Hey, Paula. Hey, Kirby. What are we drinking on this very bizarre and weird night? Okay, let's let's start with where we are because I feel like we need to address that first. There's weird sounds in the background. Yes, and, and I mean, weirder than normal for us because we're on the weird edge. Can we agree? Yeah. Yeah, that's totally weird. Weird has often been used to describe Or us. unique, different, depending on how politically uh, correct you want to be. Strange. Did we get waivers from all the voices that are going to be I in the background? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, so we came down to Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, and we're going to talk about that. Yes. We're going to talk about that. Um, but we are at our hotel, and there is a large pool beside us with kids, but we didn't want to be in our room recording this. So we decided to come downstairs and just let you know. That you may hear a lot of voices, some rushing water. Yes. You may hear some, some moms yell. Some if you're, screaming. Yeah, if you hear a mom, you, you're like, girl, I got you. I totally understand. And, and full disclosure, this wasn't planned. No, no, no. We've, we've been, yes. Anyway, so let's talk about the wine, and then we'll get to that. But if you hear voices. That's why. They're not in your head. They're, they're actually happening. Okay, right here live in person. Okay, so we went to a winery called Hillside Winery. Here which, in, which ironically was on the side of a hill. It, I know. Shocker. Mm-hmm. And I love butterflies. This one has butterflies on it. Yes. Butterflies are your jam. It is. Can you, every time I hear that, I go. It's the gate yeah, closing yeah, to the, the pool. Ga- <laughs> the gate closing to the pool. I think our, our listeners can feel that they are at the unnamed hotel because we weren't paid sponsorship dollars by it <laughs> in Pigeon Forge <laughs> experiencing a poolside podcast with us. Poolside podcast. That sounds so much higher class than what we were actually. There's also the probably highly unlicensed music that's feeding in through the house sound. Yeah. 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 Ignore that if you hear it. It doesn't actually exist. We're not paying for that either. Yeah. Okay. So b- this is called Barberry Wine. Barberry Wine, which is weird for us. Uh, not weird. You know what? It's wine's probably fine. I've never, I don't remember it. Well, okay. We should look. We should have looked that up. I thought you were doing that. I Well, you know, I didn't. So. Okay, we're going with it. Okay, okay, so Barberry Wine. Barberry Wine. From Hillside Winery in Pigeon Forge, It's Tennessee. red and it's in a solo cup. Oh, oh, we really, we need to post this. We they, It is in a solo cup. Yes, we are full, first class to our listeners tonight. You know, us and our professional wine drinking. <laughs> um, so again, I, we're, we're going to try the wine and we're going to share that with them. But also, we don't have glasses. Not actual, no. I mean, you have a pink solo I cup. I have a pink solo cup. You have a yellow solo cup, so we don't mix them up. Which is only I, you know silly. what I don't even think they're solo cups. These are like generic they solo are. cups. Yes, but the funny part was we did a wine trail today, and at the third stop on the wine trail, we could have gotten free glasses. But we forgot that part. We forgot that part. We skipped ahead to the fifth stop where we got free earbuds because we have so many glasses. We thought, who needs a glass? Right. But now we're stuck with plastic, generic solo cups <laughs> to drink our wine out of. <laughs> okay, so, barberry cheers. wine. Okay. I almost think it's better than the plastic cup. <laughs> I think the plastic generic solo cups bring something to it. I also think this reminds me of San Giovese. Really? Okay, yeah, I think, think it you does. Got it? Yes, it does. Like that end note is, is I mean, because my high class end Dorito eating. note. At San Giovese. I'm just yeah. saying. It's a San Giovese. Yes. You were, okay, so you were tasked with the responsibility to get on our Facebook page. Okay. What the Barbera wine or grape. Which she said isn't the real name, but it's a shortened name. It's a shortened name because we're in Tennessee, and they don't really do dry wine. But the gal that, Katie. Yes. Hey, FYI, Katie at Hillside awesome. Winery. Was awesome. Was awesome. She's from California, and um, she likes dry wine, too. But Tennessee is not a notoriously dry wine place. No, they like and their so, sweet tea and their sweet wine. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot like Indiana in that. They're kind of discovering their dry wine side, but they're very sweet wine-centered. And they grow a lot of their own grapes and their own fruit down here, obviously, and they and that's what they do with it. But Katie at Hillside Winery, you should talk to her. She knows her stuff. And um, we'll look up a little bit more about Barbera wine because I – or grapes. Grapes. Do you hear the scream? Yes. I mean, that's just a little extra fun thrown in mm-hmm. there. 
Um, it, it tastes a lot like Sangiovese to me. And, and it, it, we, you know, we're talking about laughing about drinking out plastic cups because what you drink your wine out of does matter. It really does. And I, again, we have mentioned many times, we can't tell you about all of the notes. We're mm-hmm. not sommeliers. We, we, we don't know all of those things. But there is a difference. There is a difference. And you have to be careful sometimes because at one point we were on vacation and the only glass that we had was a pint glass, like a beer pint glass. <laughs> And we discovered, to tell ourselves a little bit, that when you're drinking uh, wine out of a beer glass, you tend to drink wine like beer. Yeah, you kick it back a little bit too fast. A little too fast. And you, so the, it is important, if you're going to drink wine, for you novice wine drinkers, to experiment with your containers, the deli- your, your my, delivery methods. Yeah, and I'm guessing dry wine is a little harder to drink fast I'm guessing sweet wine, you can really kick it back. Yeah, yeah. I think plastic cups like this are great for Boone's Farm. Yeah, not so but Not so much for, for a nice Barbera evening wine. of sipping on a Barbera wine. But we are going to drink the rest of this from our plastic glasses and have a very good night. And we're going to talk about it, yeah. So let's talk about how we got here yeah, to this Yeah, this is really fun. So I have a working event starting... Um, Oh my gosh. That was a splash. In the that was a splash. We probably shouldn't. Con- let's just. Okay. Okay. They're we're just going to roll with it. it. We're going to roll okay. with it. Our audience is going to roll with it. We're just going to go with it. Okay. Um. So on Friday, this is a Wednesday. I'm just just to give you a perspective. Mm-hmm. Um. On Friday, I have an event starting with a team. My my team of people. Mm-hmm. Um. They're coming down. That it's a Friday through Sunday event. Yep. And so. It's in Gatlinburg. Uh, the event we normally do is in Dallas mm-hmm. in July, and they canceled that for obvious reasons because it's usually like five or 6,000 people. Dang the COVID. Yeah, exactly. And so we decided to do something a little creative mm-hmm. and come down to Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge. So we have a massive cabin that we're going to be staying in. Yes. Super fun. And Shout out to cabinsforyou.com. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be seeing They didn't a, pay for that either. They didn't. You shouldn't say that. Forget Scratch we said that, that. Ignore that. We that didn't was say a, that. Unpaid, non endorsement yeah yeah okay so we're not talking about that um a large cabin with an indoor pool and lots of bedrooms and that kind of thing and so we um came down a couple days early yes yes because and it was a last minute thing the coming down extra right. early and that's it. how we ended up here doing a podcast by a pool right is the night we normally record our podcast we would have been home but we talked on a few days ago and said you could get your work done i could get my work done and we could depart a day early yeah, so that we could go have some Paula and Kirby time. Which is, you know, I kudos to all of you that work for somebody else. Yes. Truly. I mean, I, I have so, so, so much respect for you because I do not have that gene. I was not raised with that gene. Um, we were actually just talking earlier that my dad has a wandering gene. Mm-hmm. And he was a super successful um, business person. He's a pastor now. And, but I, like I have his wandering gene and it, it would be tough for me to work for somebody else. Yeah, it really would. It really would. It just, just flexibility to say, you know what? I, I can do my job really, really well and I can, you know, take off a day early. So yesterday we came down and we ended up having a whole day together to today just to do what we wanted. But yesterday, I actually worked on the road because it's like eight hours mm-hmm. to get here. Yep. And so I knew the commitments that I had, and I knew I could do those on the road, and I could do those once we got into the hotel. Um, and so it just, yeah, we were able to do that. We decided to make it work. Yeah. And if the trade-off was, sorry, you guys kind of get the brunt of it, but if the trade-off is doing a podcast in pool furniture yeah. outside, yeah, you know, I, I, I'm sure at the time we were thinking we'd have a a table in our hotel room and it wouldn't our audience would never need to know the difference yeah but that exactly. didn't work out that way our room's kind of tight and but you know what i what i think as as we're talking about this there actually is a point to this i mean we're going to share a little bit of other stuff too but mm-hmm. um to me why don't you live your best life now right and one of the things that i i've been coaching one of my people about um some of us in our personalities can suck the joy out of anything yeah Right. Like we can, I mean, if you are very a driven personality or, well, there's a lot of different personalities and different reasons, the meaning behind or the reason behind it. But, um, there are a lot of us that can suck the joy out of anything. And for those of us that are very driven, have big goals, those kind of things, we can have a tendency to just get there. Right. And we chose many years ago to enjoy the journey. Right. 
And to me, this is part of enjoying the journey. I have not slacked on my job. You have not slacked on your job. We were very, very committed to the things that we needed to do that we want that we needed to do within our job to reach the things we wanted to do. Technology is so wonderful because it allows some mobility. And, and uh, so many of our listeners probably are experiencing mobility for the first time because they've been forced and to. And we've been de- during doing this, this for a We've long been time. doing it for yeah. years. Every time laptops got faster or got smaller, some smartphones came along, we figured out a way to incorporate that into the way we work to give us mobility. The downside is they can also become obsessive because right. you never, ever actually leave it behind. So it, we, we've had to work on. Yeah. Both enjoying the greater flexibility and the greater. I mean, I have worked from a boat in the middle of a lake before because I had a smartphone with a signal. But sometimes I miss the opportunity to get away from work because I could take the smartphone on the boat. It is a balancing act that that if you've never experienced it, I would tell you without a shade of hesitation, try to get that freedom. Well, and just ask yourself, like. Are you having fun? And that's what I was starting to say, and I kind of got sidetracked with one of my people. Are you having fun? Like, what do you actually enjoy? Because when I was talking to her, we um, we were joking about, you know, um, the right thing to say is, I love to play games with my kids. If you don't love to play games with your yeah, kids. Yeah, I don't think I ever could say that with a straight face. Right. That's not your thing. Not but my you, little kids. But you you are you are and were a great dad. But those were not, they're like playing a game with your kids was not fun. Right. That was not the, the part of it. There were different things of that that you loved. Playing Barbies with your kids was not like, oh, I cannot wait to play Barbies. But you absolutely were a great dad and loved to do things. The same is true of your life. Mm-hmm. Don't say, you you know what, I love to do X, Y, and Z if you don't. Figure out what you actually love and figure out a way to get more of it. Yeah, and then find the balance. Create because you got to work. Create the systems that allow you to have that freedom and then make sure those things don't overtake it and so you don't enjoy the freedom at the same time. Yeah. There's a, there is a line between the two of those that people who wish they were entrepreneurs – have to go, man, if I had more opportunities, I could do that. I, that's what I would do. And people who are entrepreneurs and have built that flexibility go, boy, I wish I had the, the structure and the rigidity that keeps me from, allows me to turn it on and turn it off. And so you kind of have to walk that line. So we're kind of, well, I'm talking to both sides. Yeah. Both for audiences sure. here. You can overwork because it's always with you nowadays, but you can also use the fact that it's always with you to get more moments, more, more times. Well, because we, we chose to do this podcast, but this could be looked at as work tonight. Right. We chose to do this as our hobby, as something, not not as a hobby, not well, not meaning I mean, like we we're just stuff. sort of doing we, we it. We try to make money at it. Right. But, but uh, yeah, hobby not meaning like it's just a, a kind of a little side thing if it works, whatever. Meaning um, we have full-time jobs, very full-time jobs mm-hmm. that we thoroughly love. This is our hobby, but it is a, a It is work, Um, but we, again, chose to figure it out within having fun and being at a hotel a little bit sooner and having a little bit more downtime in and around it. Yeah, and the best part is, and we're going to segue into the next part of the conversation here, because we chose to make this, we were able to highlight a Pigeon Forge wine that we didn't have 24 hours ago. Yeah. We didn't have eight hours ago. No, like like Like, four hours ago? Maybe four hours ago. So we came down to get another wine to highlight. And so we spent, we went to six, seven wineries today. You'll hear about this one. You heard about this one tonight. You'll hear about future ones on future podcast episodes because this was what we do. This, it gave us a chance to get away, to be flexible to, because we were coming to Pigeon Forge slash Gatlinburg area. And for our geographically challenged friends, there's one individual that I'm speaking of to directly if she ever listens. <laughs> uh, this is located in Eastern Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains. And we have been here on a couple of occasions before. It is not necessarily on our top ten list of places we would vacation. No, but again, going back to, okay, so find joy in the journey. Exactly. It was, okay, we started a podcast about wine and relationships because we love this stuff. Mm -hmm. We love wineries because we love the conversations we get into. Yep. So how can we go to a place that's convenient for my team? Yep. That geographically Mm -hmm. convenient for my team, um, where we could get together. It would make sense for all of the things, even though it wouldn't be the first place we chose. And how can we make it fun? 
How can we enjoy this? And so that's what we did today. Yeah, we had a lot of fun. And and so just to clarify, let, let's kind of talk about if if one of our listeners is from the West Coast or the East Coast and they're not familiar with Pigeon Forge, okay. how would you describe it to them? Okay, so this area is very, it's like a mini Las Vegas on the cheap. When no gambling. No gambling, but it's that the big signs with 9.95 t-shirts and um, tchotchkes of every kind that no one needs and um, entertainment you, entertainment and shows. and shows that you pay good money in every but like I feel like all the buildings are not the I don't want to say the buildings are big compared to Las Vegas but they kind of are they're like for the middle of the mountains they're kind of over the top yeah right like they're they're ob- obnoxious really yeah. I mean, well, it seems like there every region of the country has one of these communities. Yeah, and so it's I, I I'm saying that, and that may come across negative or condescending, and I don't mean that. It's just it's just very over the top. If you look at the beautiful mountains, the beautiful trees, and all of this, and then you'll have a um, Ripley's Believe It or Not museum. Yeah, and like a fake skyscraper with a gorilla hanging off of it, grabbing an airplane. I mean, the, I mean that's that's just. They Odd. don't seem to blend and match. Yes, exactly. If you took every tourist attraction, tourist uh, cliche. Yeah, yes, it's a cliche. And put it into one place. It is a cliche. That is exa- that's exactly it. And so, you know, Pigeon Forge, Gatlinburg area, Branson, Missouri, mm-hmm. um, Fredericksburg, Texas. Had some of had that. Had some of that. Um, we you know we've ran into other different areas where they're almost regional attractions. Yeah. People drive into it. There's no airport nearby right. of size. People aren't flying into Branson on a regular basis. They're not flying into Pigeon Forge on a regular basis. Right. Um, so they're, they're drive-in places, and they have all of the cliche tourist-type things. But they are almost passionate. There are people who, who love these places with a passion. Absolutely. And just like you you guys have probably heard me say, and if you haven't, you will. I am a beach girl. Like, give me give me a beach, especially a beach in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And, I, I mean, really, I could do, like, uh, that's my jam. That is totally my jam. There are some people that feel the same way about this. Yeah, and, and that's absolutely fine. And I think that's one of the things that we've tried to work on is what is it about locations like this that aren't make it not our jam? Yeah. And if it's not our jam, is it? How does that make us feel about people who it is their jam? And I was um, talking yeah. about this earlier, going, uh, that's kind of a wisdom development that I've gotten that I don't have to like it or appreciate it to appreciate you liking it or appreciating it. Right? Yeah, I don't. I don't walk around here and go, "Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get back." But I understand that the same way I feel about a beach, or the same way I feel about my state park that's close to mm-hmm. me, that I just, I can't imagine anybody not loving my state park like my state park you right. know because they clearly put it it's in place your for me. State it's park. my state park um canoeing down my state park running at my state park i can't imagine anybody not loving why my do, county why do more people not live where we live because it is awesome that's right exactly and so but the same is true i think people go there and probably go i don't get it i don't get it it's yeah, yeah. it's it, well, we talked about the people who live in flats in a big city that's not our jam that doesn't mean that it shouldn't be somebody's jam. Yeah, and so just asking yourself, like, where do or you or jelly love to if you're from other parts of the world? Yeah, but where do you love to go? Where do you love to go? And really, again, that to me, that's about enjoying life. And a positive note, I would say that these type of experiences, both Branson and Pigeon Forge, Catlinburg area, I almost think everybody should experience it one time. Well, yeah, because you might find that you love something that you didn't know you know you loved, and it's just so unique. It is. It's so unique. And, and the funny part is that we were talking about, okay, so what is it for us that makes it not our really big thing? You, you talk about the wandering spirit. Very much. Everything you could possibly need is on a six-mile strip yeah. in Pigeon Forge. Right. You can play miniature golf. You can ride a roller coaster. You can see a show. You can have a, a meal. You can get cotton candy. You can get uh, any fudge. Anything fudge. you can possibly You can get a lot of you fudge. You can get a lot of fudge. You can do a flea market. You can um, buy a, a, a man, handmade knife. You can go see a dolly, go to Dollywood. All of this is in like 10 square miles. It's all right there. So as a wanderer, that is 
not something where it's a matter of you just experiencing life. No, because wandering means finding something unique, and mm-hmm. this is not. No. doesn't feel like it. doesn't feel like it because, like, one strip center next to another strip center looks like a carbon copy. Like you could go any place in the country and find them. Right. For me, I am a d- highly curious person. Right. My challenge, our challenge, has always been that when we travel, you kind of like to find a spot and just sit. Yeah. And take it all in. Experience it. And experience it. And I need to know all of the information. Yes, ta- are we, do we have a point to this podcast? Because I don't. There's wanna, I no just, point to this podcast at all. Okay, okay. So talk about because this was a place in our marriage. So talk about the first time we went to St. Martin. Okay, so the first time we went to St. Martin, and, and what I love about St. Martin is the is that it's a very small place with lots of public beaches. Thirty four square miles. Thirty four square miles. Thirty seven beaches. Yeah, and all the beaches in St. Martin are public. No matter whether there's a hotel on it or whatever. And so when I first researched on our first trip, I thought, we're going to be there for seven days. 37 divided by 7 is 7.2 beaches per day. We can see all 37 of them if we are just diligent about it. We can hang out for an hour. We can drive to the next beach, hang out for an hour, drive to the next beach, hang out for an hour, and drive to the next beach. Because I'm curious. I wanted to know which beach was the best. And you didn't appreciate that as a vacationing style. But it's that driven curiosity to know everything. Yeah. When I go into a new city as an event planner, which is one of the parts of my life, I usually go in on a site inspection 24 hours early before I tell my contacts I'm coming in. Right. Because I want to walk the city. Right, and just experience it. And experience it. I want to know where all of the restaurants are, all of the areas are. How do you get from point A to point B? I kind of want to have almost a concierge knowledge before I either book the space or when I host the event so I can tell people where to go. When you come to a place like Pigeon Forge, it is overloads that curiosity, that stimulus. I cannot go to every fudge place. I cannot go to every amusement park. I can't go to every show. I can't go to – so therefore I'm frozen. Yeah. And so for me and my personality, I had to realize that my anxiety in an environment like this was too many options. For another person, that is their joy. Yeah. It's what causes me anxiety brings somebody else. This is like exactly what I want. I want all these opportunities. I don't even have to do them all. I just love the excitement and the enthusiasm and the energy that's created by all of it. And – I, I guess why I want to share that or why I want to touch on that is because the first time we went to St. Martin, I was completely frustrated. Yeah. Because I would, I felt like I would literally just get my butt in a chair or my butt in the sand and think, okay, I'm going to experience this. Like, and my experience is let me sit here, let me people watch, let me eat some food, let me drink some drink, whatever, whatever was on the beach, I would experience it. And about the minute I got there, you were like, whew, okay, did that. Yep. Because once we got there and we saw it, you were really done with it. And what I've learned is I wanted to get to your point. I needed to satisfy enough curiosity because what you're going to experience, you just talked about, is actually a better way, more relaxing way to vacation. Right. But but I couldn't change who I was. Right. The curiosity was going to be there. I just needed to get to the point where it was okay. I knew enough, and then I could be I could I could deal with it. And yeah. on a beach environment on a Caribbean island, I think that's why we finally came to the the position where we're together on that because I can learn enough quickly enough now. You usually give me if we go to a new place like that twenty four to forty eight hours. Yeah. Like we went to Hawaii last last fall. Like the first couple of days, you knew I had to know everything about the hotel. Yep. Yep. And you just ignored me until I knew where well, everything was. I was going to say the other thing is I don't have to go with you. Right. I I don't think that, okay, we're not relaxing if you're not sitting next to me. There was, Because the first time we went to St. Martin, I thought, oh, I need to go with him. I need to do that. What? What I now understand is, okay, you need to see all the places. I don't. Right. Drop me here. And come back. So you're relaxing there. I'm relaxing by getting all the information. Which is great. And, and so once we, I have all the information. You can come back to where I'm at. I can come at. back to where you're at and I'm good. So so figuring out, I guess now 27 years later, I would say figuring out what what the communication of what is relaxing to you or what gets you to a point of being able to relax is super important. 
because we've learned that over years. And now we really are, honestly. I mean, you can you could drop me off at any beach and you can go do whatever you want to do. And I don't care. And I had to learn to not feel guilty if that's what I did. Yeah. Because it's really okay. Yeah, it really is. And that's been a growth in our relationship. And I don't know that there are very many pairings of people where that's exactly what's going to happen, where they're going to, both of them are going to enjoy everything the same way. Oh, I think that's really, anor- I mean, that, I can't say that's not normal, but that that would be unusual. unusual. And so being able to have that conversation and that freedom going, okay, I get what you need and you get what I need. And so let's marry the two of those together in some way, shape, or form. And, you know, go, talking about vacation, but I think it translates to life just in general, is just communicating about, I mean, we've said many times that communication is so big. And there are so many times where you don't say something where it <laughs> it would save so much stress. If, if, you, if the two of you, whoever the two of you are, whatever relationship you're in, just open your mouth. Yeah. And said, okay. When we're going to this vacation, I'm picturing sitting on the beach with a book. I just need to find one great beach with some great, a, a great chair, a bathroom I can use. And, you know, if there's a restaurant, that'd be great, too, so I could get some food right there. Right. Like, that'd be great. And if I, like, if I had understood, in my perception, that's what a great day would look like. And you had said, I actually need to see all of them first to make sure I'm not missing out on one. Right. There, I think had we had that conversation, I could have said, oh, I get that. Okay, I'll go with you tomorrow, and then I'll probably figure that out for myself, and then you can drop me off if you still need to look. But instead, what I did was I went with you. I was frustrated. You were, like, having the time of your life, and I was feeling like I don't even know what we're doing. Right. And it w- I did not enjoy it at all. Well, we were, it's what's weird is we were so wise at that point because we were about eight years into our marriage. You know, you'd think we'd known everything at that point. Oh, yeah, because we're brilliant at that. Because what we were like, I mean, I don't know. We were all of 20-something. Yeah, Yeah. but it is. Setting the expectations. What is it that you're expecting out of this? communication. What am I expecting out of this? You have to have those conversations over and over and over again. You're going to get into patterns where you've kind of done things together before and you don't necessarily need to be as in-depth with those. We don't need to have those conversations about beaches anymore because we've had them. Oh, tons. But if we were to have a new experience going to a new place, maybe we were going to Russia. We've never been to Russia together. Oh, I would love to. Yes. Yes. But having the conversation, okay, we're going to Moscow. What's your expectation? And and me being able to say, well, my expectation is I get to go see the Red Square. I get to go do all of these things. You go, well, all I want to know is ride the subway. Um, Those you you have those conversations. And so chasing all of these rabbits as to how we got here, I don't know. But that's kind of the key is realizing when you're going to do something together, one, what are your triggers? Two, what are your expectations with each other? Three, what what do you really want out of a trip? What do you want out of a place? And four, it's okay if what you want out of a place isn't what somebody else wants out of a place. And be honest about who you are and who they are. Yeah, and I and I think it's um, not being understanding that if you're both rigid with it, that's fine. Like if you're both totally okay with planning every second of every day, then that's great. If you if you both are in agreement, but it really, I mean, I look back and we are both adventurers, so that's been a blessing. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're not hugely structured people. We work very hard to structure during our day jobs. You know, right. I mean, that's something we work really hard at. So we're very good at not doing that because we choose to. But I, I just look back at our free time, fun time. And I think there are a lot of times we, yeah, we, we probably could have enjoyed them more with a little more communication. Yeah. And the last thing I want to make sure we cover before we, we sign off on this week's episode is that even inside this last minute trip, it still didn't happen the way we thought it was going to happen. Oh, no. So we, we got down here, and we knew we had this whole day to ourselves to do whatever we wanted. Yeah. So we got this great idea. We did some research, and we were going to go tubing. Yes, because we love adventures that we can't do anyplace else. Right. So, again, you talked about this being a lot of the same thing over and over again. So we thought, well, we could go tubing down a, a river, and that would be different. And you could tube 10 different rivers, and they're just different enough. But they're fun. 
So we decided we found And we love outdoors. And we love we outdoors. Both, we both agree that we love to be outside, right. not inside. So we were going to go tubing, and we woke up this morning to a very overcast, dreary. dreary day, chances of rain throughout, and it ended up raining a lot today. And so instead, we got in the car. Yeah. Because we didn't want to say the, the, the old us would have just chilled in the hotel room for a full day going, we don't have to work, so we're going to watch TV all day. And, and we can all agree that we're doing enough of that right. at home right now. Especially so. with COVID. Yeah. So we got in the car, and we drove an hour and a half outside of Knoxville, Tennessee, to a place called... Bushy Prison. Bushy... Bushy. Uh, maybe I should maybe look that up while you're talking. Yeah. yeah. Basically... You talk. I'll look it up. It is a, an, an abandoned prison. It was a prison from 1896... To 2009, 2009, so over 113 years, it was a working prison, and and like the hard, hardcore Tennessee criminals went there, and now it is a distillery and a place you can take a tour around, and it is awesomely cool and creepy and weird all it at one was, time. You had been to Alcatraz. I had been to Alcatraz, which is a pure tourist location now. Okay, it's Brushy Mountain State Penitentiary. Brushy, not Bushy. I didn't think Bushy sounded right. Brushy, sorry. See, we have these when we come into a podcast that we know we're going to talk about, but we don't always write it down. And by the time 30 <laughs> minutes goes by, Brushy becomes Bushy. Yeah, and it just gets inappropriate. Yes, brushy okay. Mountain Penitentiary. Okay. And, and it was really, really cool and creepy and nasty because essentially they've set up a, a self-guided tour through this old, run-down... Makes Shawshank look like a castle yeah. type facility, but yet they're not doing any maintenance on the building. Not in like in that part in, in the that part prison. Right. In the prison. In part the prison. Of it. So the distillery and the office and the restaurant Are beautiful. and check in, all that beautiful. Really, really cool. We gotta sample some moonshine. I do not like moonshine. <laughs> Paul is not so bad about it, but you know, I'm not a big fan. But when you get up into the prison and you're walking down by those cells it's and creepy. you're realizing it's yeah, and it's only been closed for twelve years. And it's disgusting. And you think, okay, let's backtrack through my head imaginary 12 years ago when this was a working prison. It would have still been disgusting. Yeah, it was. Um, but what was so fun about, I mean, again, this was not what we thought our day was going to look like. Um, but we got an experience. We decided, how are we going to look? I mean, at least from, me, from my perspective, it was, okay, at the end of the day when I go to bed tonight, how am I going to look back and think this was a fun day? And I did something, we did something that was historic, which mm-hmm. you love. And I love, I history, love history, too. I love history, too. And um, so having that experience, um, we talked to an inmate that was actually there, which was pretty cool. He was out now. He was, he was free. Yeah. <laughs> yes. He was still in But, cars. okay, can, and, uh, and I'll just touch on this really quickly. If you guys get a chance to come here, um, this whole concept is brilliant to me because this brushy penitentiary really supported that whole community there in the mountains. Yeah, because we're back in the middle of, like, banjo land. Yeah, like, there was... There was not even manjas playing. Yeah. And so there was a lot of um, employment and things that were from that penitentiary. So when they shut it down in 2009, it took a lot of that away. Right. And so for this place to be brought back and, um, you know, for there to be people working there and stuff, it was just really, really cool. So just gives you a lot of appreciation for the people around you and more of a, I mean, it is a tourist spot, obviously, but it was away from the tourist strip and we're learning to discover with when it comes to things like that those tourist places that aren't in a touristy area that oftentimes get overlooked yeah are some of the best totally and this is this is just brilliance on top of brilliance it's like i love to stop at roadside historical markers yeah i kind of felt like this was that on steroids yeah it really was it was a glimpse into history and you know we're both in our mid-40s and to realize it was a working prison in our lifetime. And when they're talking about they, – they used to whip their prisoners as a form of punishment up until 1965. Yeah. I was born in 1971. Yeah, that was not – That touches my life sign. Yeah. Time. And you, you think about – they were showing a video about the what happened in the 70s and 80s. I don't – you know, maybe it's just my own weird perception of time. But I'm only thinking things are modern. Yeah. But I've lived through a lot of stuff that we – so we would consider archaic now. Well, like in that prison is where James Earl Ray was um, was held and, and killed. Mur- and killed and escaped from and then murdered in after he was caught. And and that was still in my lifetime. And, he, and it was segregated. He's the, for those of you who don't know, he was the one that killed, that assassinated Martin Luther King Jr. 
And so, you know, the six degrees from separation, we've now been in the prison that held James Earl Ray, Ray. who killed Martin Luther King Jr. That's three degrees. Yeah. And, it, and it's just, I, I always told our girls, history is about her making the story come to life. And, and this, I felt like that's what happened. It, it really did. And when we were there, just like you were saying, like 1965 was when they quit whipping people. Yeah. I mean, it was segregated. And we were in the places that was segregated. So I, I don't know. I just think travel, being different places, experiencing different things, understanding what you enjoy and how you enjoy living life. I think there's just a lot of um, corollaries to that. And not waiting until you're retired to enjoy your life. Whether you can get away to the Caribbean on a beach or that's not your jam and you can come to Gatlinburg and experience something that you truly enjoy and that's biscuits and gravy for breakfast at a place you don't normally go, whatever it is. Take the time. Smell the roses. Figure it out. Do it in a way that's fiscally responsible. Of course. But make sure you do it. Just do it. I mean, if you're if you're married, um, if you're not married, then find a great friend to go with you, or go by yourself if you're introverted. But just just don't look back on your life and, um, yeah, feel like you missed it. So, as a reminder, we are racking up the downloads. We are building our audience. We are growing the Love and Jesus Use podcast, and that's all on our listeners who have continued to share. And we so appreciate you. Ed, yes, this was a fun episode. It had really nothing to do with anything took something away from it that's great but more importantly tell your friends tell your loved ones tell everybody that we're awesome go rate us and share us we would love it you can find us on facebook and instagram at love and jesus juice or online at love and jesus and we'll see you next week